How to create realistic materials for any interior scene? In this tutorial, I will show you some basic steps to get you started on creating your own materials. And I also have a little trick for you for extra realism at the end of the video. So, let's go! So let's start with some basic stuff and we'll do the wall material. I'm working with Corona render, but this will apply to even V-Ray or every other renderer. I'll start by simply applying one material from the material editor and let's they change the color to white color. Now one thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to make it very bright, otherwise it will create some problems during render. What I suggest for interiors not to go beyond 200 in the value, maybe 210 tops. Okay, now let's add some slight reflection, I'm going to the reflection area and bring the level up to 1. I'm gonna keep the Fresnel IOR at the same value and I'm going to reduce, let's take a look, to reduce the glossiness so it won't be that shiny. I think something like 0.7 will be fine. You can see it right in the viewport. Of course you can change it, it's not have to be this uh, amount, it can be even less or if you want a shiny looking walls, something about 9.9, .9. but I'm going to stick with 7. And actually this could work in most cases. If you want to bring it a bit more to life, you can add some uh, bump map. Um, if you take a, cl a close look at your walls, like right now, you will see that the surface is not very flat. It has all these small bumps and uh, maybe paint strokes. So we can insert right in this bump slot a similar texture of a plaster, for example. But for now, I think this could work just like this. Let's move over to our windows. The default 3ds Max windows consist of five different material IDs. We have four different for the frame and one for the glass. Typically it's gonna be number three for the glass. For that I need a new multi-sub object right under the general materials. We have multi-sub object material and this is basically a list of materials that you can compose together. Now I'm gonna set the number to five. We need only five materials and I'm gonna drag one material to the first slot and I'm gonna copy it as an instance to all the others except of number three which is going to be our glass. So this material will, will be our um, frame. I'm gonna make it something similar to aluminum. Let's make it like a darker gray. I'm gonna add reflection, raise up the Fresnel IOR so it will be more metallic it could work with 2, maybe 2.5 and I will reduce the glossiness to about 0.05 and you can obviously experiment with this I think I maybe do it a little less metallic 0.2 and let's apply to the window and the other one as well and we have another here and of course we need our glass material Again, I'm going to keep it very simple, not too fancy. I'm going to make the color as black. It doesn't really matter because the material is going to be quite transparent. Reflection to 1. I'm going to keep the IOR at 1.6. It's okay for glass. And the reflection, again, level 1. You can see now that the window is transparent. And what I like to do is to give it a little less uh, refraction, maybe 0.8, so it will be a little bit darker. Now specifically in Corona Render, when we're dealing with uh, glass material over very thin 
object like this glass window, we better check this thin option. That will increase actually our uh, render time and it will be easier for the light to come from outside inside. And again, remember, this is only good for very thin glass-like objects. Now our next material is going to be the floor. I'm gonna go with something basic. I will make 60 by 60 gray floor tiles. Let's isolate this floor plan by clicking Alt-Q. I'm gonna add a new material and in the diffuse map I'm gonna add tiles map let's check it here to see it in the viewport and now I want to control the tiles and enter the size of each tile so to do so I will add a UVW map to the plan and set it to real world map size now in the tile texture I'm going to reduce the horizontal count to 1 and the vertical count to 1 and set it here as well to real world scale. Now I can set each tile. So let's say 60 by 60 and we can even check it by placing a box over here and you can see that it's 60 by 60. Now the tile material, I'm going to change it to complete white and I'm going to explain right away why I'm doing this and all the grouts to black. And this map is actually going to be a blend mask. Let's move over to the slate material editor so it will be easier to understand. So now I want to add a mix map. I'm going to keep the tile material, sorry, the tile map, and it's going to be our mix amount. Let's look it. So now I can set a texture for the tiles in this lot. Let's add this uh, concrete texture. I'm going to drag it over here. Actually, we need to swap it the other way around. And now we, you can see that we have the concrete material and we can control the grout by changing its color. Let's say if I set it to light color, you can see how the grout is changing. I'm gonna set it something a bit more dark, a bit darker. Now we can use the same tile, let's copy it. to the bump slot and let's reduce the bump amount maybe 0.3 so the tiles will be higher than the grout and I think we can copy the diffuse map to the reflection and let's copy as well to the glossiness let's bring it up 1 I'm gonna raise the IOR to about 2 I will decrease the amount of the maps in the refraction so it will be more reflective and also for the glossiness I think this could work for now now one thing to keep in mind that the texture of the concrete is not using a real world scale like the tile texture so I'm gonna add another UV map just for the concrete I'm gonna set it to channel 2 so it won't interfere with the mapping of the tile texture. And I'm gonna go to the concrete map and also change it to two. So now I can control it without changing our tiles. Let's set it to about 600 on 600. So now I can take a closer look at this test render and we can even reduce the amount of the grout thickness by going to the tile again
and under the ground we can make them smaller let's make it 0.2 maybe reduce a bit the bump map okay let's do another material i want to cover this wall with some uh, wood veneer and i'm gonna do it by adding a new object i'm gonna click s for snap i'm gonna check right click that i'm snapping on the vertex and i'm gonna start and click right here here and here let's go to the modifiers and i'm gonna add extrude modifier bring it up all the way right there and let's give it a shell modifier of about 0.5 centimeters all right now very similar to what we did before with the materials i'm going to add a new one let's delete this one we don't need it anymore and let's bring corona material i'm gonna pick some texture that i have here i have the diffuse let's grab the reflection and the bamp map diffuse reflection color and reflection glossiness and the bamp slot let's tweak it a bit add reflection i can set it on ir of 2 in the bump we don't need so much because it's quite flat so 0.3 and let's apply it here add a uvw map as a box i want to rotate the gizmo so again i need to go to the gizmo and let's rotate 90 degrees and over here as well okay now i want to increase the uvw map because i don't want to see this line over here so let's increase the width okay so it's about 300 let's increase it here a bit and here and also i want to add a chamfer modifier so we don't have this unrealistic sharp edge i'm gonna add a chamfer i'm gonna set it to smooth chamfers only and let's reduce it to about 0.3 add another segment and we actually can do it also for this wall let's add a chamfer reduce it to about 0.5 smooth only chamfers and add one segment so now we can get much more realistic results as opposite to not adding any chamfer at all i can copy this one to this other wall object as an instance and that's it Alright, in the next part of this series, we'll dive in on how to create and balance interior lighting for this scene, which is a very important step. So, let me know if you have any questions regarding this video, and if you learned something new today, like and share it to the world. I'll see you next time.